Get out of this will. Get out of God's will. Come on. Remember that? Don't you want that? You know you want that. Do that. What he's trying to do is nudge you out of the secret place. But the Bible tells me he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And the more he nudges, the more you stand. The Bible says, stand therefore, strong in the Lord. Stand you therefore. Put the whole arm of God. Resist the devil and he has to flee. After a while, he gets tired. Then he go to my brother who over here not watching nothing and just pull him right on out. But he got his eyes still on you because he's hoping one day you might be off your A game and he can come back for you. That's why you have to have him as Lord. He is owner. He is possessor. He is Lord of all. Even like my friend said, either he's Lord of all or he's Lord of nothing. So what you do with why y'all in here? I'm teaching on stewardship. Get on my message. Oh, y'all got me all off. So when we say someone is living in the world, we're actually saying they're living and operating in the jurisdiction of the world. One more time. We are faced with a choice. Either we're going to operate in God's system, or we're going to operate in the world system. Now let me say this. If you say, well, I just my money and I do whatever I want, then guess what? Then you have to look to the world to reward you. Because that's yours. Your owner, possessor, and rewarder. So you can't come over here in God's jurisdiction and ask him, ask him to bless it when he's not Lord of it. If we're going to get out of debt, then we must operate in the principles of God in order to see debt release and debt cancellation. The world system says it can help you out of debt, but here's how we do it. It's through bill uh, consolidation. It's through second mortgages. It's through credit counseling. It's the karma credit. It's bankruptcy. It's, yeah, we get you out. Then I want your firstborn, I want your car, I want your house. And the Lord spoke to me when I was looking over this at home before I left. And he said, you notice that whenever I get my people out of debt, I never collect collateral? <laughs> they're trying to get you out while they're taking stuff from you, hoping you mess up. It's quiet in here, but I'm in the house. <laughs> which never works, it just ties the hand who borrows. God's system of financial wealth never requires you to put up your home for collateral or your car or your children. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we, we have to, I, I gotta get some more, more stuff then. I don't wanna get you some, some good stuff. I got good stuff here. So what we understand is that in order for God, for God to bless us, we have to come in line with his um, order or with his, under his jurisdiction. In other words, he has to say it like, you have to do it like he said it. He said, he said you have to give in order to get. Amen? Amen. He's the only one that can see the impossible in a possible, uh, see the impossible in situations. So what I'm trying to think about is the five loaves and two fish. You know, the one that's, that, 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 that can see, well, I got 5,000 people to feed. All I need is five loaves and two fish. So you want to be on his team, his side, because he can take the little you have and multiply. And watch this now. It seemed like he's selfish. Because he took that last lunch. He took that boy's lunch. <laughs> and that's where folks say, they just want, want the money. No, 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 no. God will take the little you have. Yeah. 
multiply, bless others with it, and give you the remaining. The Bible says when they finished that, that boy had from one lunch to 12 baskets for it. So if God is asking you to give something, it's only because he got something bigger he wants to give back to you. He said, he said give me that little piece of metal and I'll give you real gold. And we're trying to hold on, saints. Amen? We're trying to hold on to the little we have and not understanding that it's not enough. I'm bringing, fix me a little bit. I'm trying to, I, you know, I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. You, you, you have to stop thinking like the world. I'm going to stop this because, you know, I, I'm going to start right here. You, you have to stop thinking like the world. You, you can't operate in, and I was going to really, I had some good scripture in Luke, and we're going to read it maybe next Sunday, you know, um, just, just showing you that you can't think like the world and the world system and ask God to bless it. God is trying to get money to you, not get money from you. And if every seed produces after its own kind, then how are you going to get blessed if you don't give? The Bible says give and it shall be given back to you. Well, I don't know. That 10% is a lot. That's why you don't ask to be a millionaire, a thousandaire, or a billionaire. Because if you can't even give a hundred air, if he can't even, he can't trust you with a hundred air. You can't give him $10. You know he ain't going to give him a hundred and ten ten thousand dollars so, so let me help you out. Save your prayers. <laughs> that ain't gonna work. You won't give him five. You know he gonna get 50 out of you. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. And we're trying to extract more than what we're giving. And God is saying, and whose kingdom are you operating in? The world says that, but I don't operate like that. To know God on a greater level, financial level, you have, you've got to make him Lord of your finances. If you know this, and I'm not trying to ring our bell, you know, we just kept giving. And we ain't had nothing. And we still give. I don't know how not to give. <laughs> I, gave, I gave away yesterday. Oh, you, you did good? Here, let me bless you. Always looking for opportunities to bless. I, I, I want to help you all. So if you're struggling financially, you better play so, you know. God tells you that the, the way up is down. And the only way you're going to come out of that thing is to break the power of the back of that poverty spirit. This is what the Lord said to me. You can say, well, I don't, I don't have a financial need. Praise the Lord. Then you still have a poverty mentality. And this is how he explained it to me. Listen to how he explained it to me. He said, there are people with lots of money and they're still in poverty. Because they're in poverty in their mind. Because they feel that just because they can make it, they can pay their bills and they're living lavish and they're living large, they're okay. But what good is that? You're still in bondage because you can't help nobody else out. So just because you can pay your bills and pay your bills on time and all is going well, but if God requires you to help somebody, can you? And if he asks you, you might do it one time, but can he ask you ten times before you start? Because God wants our money not to control us, but for us to control our money. And right now, far too many people are being controlled by their money. And that's why money is running from you, because money is a currency. And any current has to move. Don't get tight. Don't get, don't, don't, don't get, don't, hey, I'm telling you, you do research on, on, on money scriptures. Jesus told the Pharisees, he, they said, we tithe, 
We, we, you know, he said, watch this. This is the people who give. We tithe, we do this. And, you know, back in the Bible days in, 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 in Palestine, they, they would tithe of their grain and their crops. We give men, we give cumin, and we give this and that. And the Lord says, yes. But watch, he went out for something else. He said, but you have no love. You're judgmental and you're, and you're critical. He said, you have no mercy. He said, you ought to do that. And that's why some preachers say, see, that's why tithing not, you're lying. You don't know your Bible. Go back to Bible school. Listen, he said, that you ought to do, but you need to do this also. Yeah. In other words, don't just give. You need to have some love in your heart. You need to show some mercy. You need to show some kindness. Yes, tithe, but don't live like the devil. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. There's so much more I could tell you. And we're walking through this church family that we are going to get God's house out of debt. Yes. So, because there's no other way. But I'm telling you, if you just trust God, He'll bless you. Nothing you give to God, He loses. Nothing. Not a child. Because I see multiplication. What you don't, what y'all don't want to think about, I've already thought about. It. Because God never, never requires anything from us without adding to it. So once she leaves your home, when she comes back, after she has done the course of whatever God's going to do, she's bringing a man back. I'll check it. She's bringing babies back. When she's gone, she's going to do life. Whatever God asks for one, he always multiplies. 